our Wednesday, our hump day, middle of the week. So let's see. Now on Wednesday today, Mrs. Walker and myself are both at school. Um, we have always been mixed around on what grades we have. Um, so I don't know how much we'll be giving you feedback as in responding to emails straight away. Um, I'm assuming one of us will end up on stage three and one of us will be able to give feedback almost instantaneously, but that may not be the case. So just be mindful. We're not gonna be responding straight away. In that vein, we there's no Zoom today. So because we're both at school, we thought we won't put a Zoom in case we can't make it. We'll see how things run. So that's why there was a Zoom on Monday and no Zoom on Wednesday. Okay, today's focus task, reading, inferencing, spelling, grammar. So the reading here, the comprehension strategy. It's very important you do the comprehension strategy and you do your reading. I've always said reading is one of the most important components of your learning. So it's really vital that you do it. Inferencing and grammar tasks, especially that you're doing nice, neat handwriting. Some people are spending all their work on their iPad. You can't go a whole term without writing. So it's really important that you are writing, please. Check in. Um, our attendance has drifted off. We were started as the best grade in the school with 100% attendance. But over the last week or so, we've really dropped off. Um, if you are struggling, you need to let us know. Um, but it's really important you do your attendance. And if you are sick, you need to have your parents contact the school to let them know that um, you're not learning for the day. You can't just do the attendance and then not do any work, okay? We are just change. we do just change your attendance later, but it's just more hassle for us. Um, how are you feeling today? Please make sure you feel that in, especially if you're struggling, even more so if you're struggling, I need to know so that we can contact you, we can check in. Um, Say the prayer. Reading. Okay, our reading is monitoring on our Wednesday, which is coming up with words that need clarification. So picking some words from your text. It says at least three words from your text. We put four spaces because you may wish to do four. And what is their definition? Okay. Now our writing. If you've been working on this, all you have to do is the conclusion. You may have even done the images, which is the other part of today. So um, listen to the audio, it talks through what to do, um, but it's really important that you are working each day on this. If you're not, you need to go back and catch up. You should have completed all your explanation paragraphs yesterday. If you've not done this, you will need to finish that today, as well as doing this. Today we'll be writing our conclusion, adding in images or charts. Let's have a look at an example conclusion. Here we go. We know that a conclusion is a summary of the key points in the text. It wraps everything up. Your conclusion will be around two to three sentences that sum up the process of your topic and remind the reader of the purpose. What's the purpose? Okay, read this example. You're obviously adding in images or flowcharts to help engage and inform our reader. Okay, images are vitally important to information text. So your slides template here, yeah, open it up. Okay, let's open one up. Let's click a 5R student today. Let's have a look uh, who's jumping out at me. Let's go with, let's go with Micah. Let's have a look. I'm here to teach you about how to write a book. Okay, he's done a general introduction, not about the topic, but no me. Headlines, once you've filled in the box, beautiful. Okay, so you can see the comments, the information here. He, all right, let's have a look at another one. Let's go with, let's see what Xavier's done. Okay. So he's started including these images. How do, how do you make a rabbit cage and what do they do? It outlines what it is, which is a great introduction. Description paragraph, okay. Nice. And then we're coming up to here's description paragraphs, which is what he'll be, what you guys work on today. So, um, that will be done by the time you watch this video, I'm sure. Let's have a look at one other. Let's have a look at Elizabeth. Okay, ooh, nice and pretty. Okay. As you can see, how to duplicate items. Oh, interesting. If you ever wanted two chocolate bars instead of one, always, or two dogs or cats, by the almighty Elizabeth. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow, okay, nice. So here you go how it works. Nice, Elizabeth, love it. All right, let's keep going, let's go back. All right, have a read over your paragraphs, okay? 
Um, it's Mondays. I know in my class, I fixed, I gave some feedback on the information from Monday. So make sure you read it. I changed mine to a different color so you could see what I changed. Um, write two to three sentences, add images. So fill out all the image boxes throughout, okay? Um, you guys have been doing a great job, so keep that up. Mathematics. All right, Sammy's dad is laying out new grass in the backyard. So grass needs to cover, so we're talking area. The backyard is a square with sides of 12 meters. Huge backyard, 12 meters by 12 meters. What is the area of grass that Sammy's dad will need to buy? Well, 12 one side, 12 that side, times it together equals meters squared. Calculate the area of rectangles and squares using a formula. That's what we just did in that last one. Here's the video formula. Please pay attention. Okay. It explains how the formula works, which is quite interesting. I like it. Okay. Calculate the area, length and width, area, area, area. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Nice and easy, this one. So long as you know your times tables, super easy. It's got one. It's telling you it's a square. It does look like a square. I always think they should have the lines to state that it is a square, but keep going. All right, show all your answers. Look at here, how you show your answer. You actually write the formula. Length times width times area, L times W times equals A. Um, so centimeters times that equals that. Um, here, you've got the reverse. 99 centimeters squared is the total area. So what times nine equals 99? 11 times nine equals 99. All right, four times what equals 72? So you can reverse it, do a um, inverse operation. 72 divided by four equals what? To get your answer, pretty easy. 117, nine, ooh. You might need to um, try your times tables. Nine times 10 is 90. Nine times 11 is 99. Nine times 12 is 108. There you go. Okay, keep going. Nice, calculate the area, paddock A, B, C, and D. Oh, simple, guys, simple, simple, simple. All right, here's a nice one, extension task. I expect most people that can do this one really easy. So if we're working out just the area, we would draw a line across there. You've got a 14 by one area, and then you've got an eight by 10 area there. Add the two areas together. This one, you can cut your lines however you want. So you might do 10 times 28, 10 times 28. And then you've got 16 by, that's 28. That's, which one's 16 there? I think it's saying the side's 16. So, oh yeah, but the side's, that's 16, which means down here is 12 and 10, 10, that's 20, that's 33. That means that's 11, okay? So 11 times 12, done all the hard work for you. Inferencing. Another thing we're marking about earthquakes. Okay, so we've got um, true or false for the first six, and then you need to draw, um, list the difference between an, the focus of an earthquake and the epicenter. So what is the epicenter of an earthquake? What is the focus of an earthquake? Define it for me. So instead of drawing it in a table, just tell us what the um, epicenter is and what the focus is. I changed that when I made it. Okay, spelling grammar. Okay, again, I've added the circles, so drag and drop where they go. Um, four spelling mistakes, three capital letters, two question marks, and two full stops, and then handwrite it correctly and upload it. We'll be looking today on these ones. Religion, what is happening in this image? What's this image depicting? What event? Okay, watch the video. Here is your video. What does the term Sabbath mean? Key words. So it's the focus, to, so one of your points might be what it means. And what else does it talk about? What are the key ideas? Oh, here you go. It's a different definition. Don't go and write this as that one because this is a person telling their meaning. Sabbath is that uncluttered time and space in which we can distance ourselves from our own act activities enough to see what God is doing. A task. Create a word art using the app Word Cloud. There are lots of different ones. Wordly, any other app. If you search Word Cloud, there'll be a million apps. There's a lot of free ones and you put some words in and it makes a little artwork. Okay. And our art, we haven't put this in because we're going to talk about this later on. So um, I will add an extension to this video or actually I might just leave it and not act and you'll see the slides. 
but in regards to our Christmas art, we've just been having a meeting as a stage. So we're going to have a school-based competition um, and because the C CEO competition, they've pushed it to week three next term, but all work must be done at school and I can't see um, us really having that much time at school to work on it. So we're going to do a school-based competition, um, which we'll explain a little bit later, and then we will... Um, come back and talk about what's going on with um, this one. So pretty much think about, you'll be starting your artwork, we'll be picking our top ones from the grade, um, and then next term, if we are at school at the start of next term, we will be doing a, our um, having those students recreate their artwork because the artwork for the CEO competition must be done at school. So for everyone, you will be making your artwork however you wish to make it, now, I'm not expecting people to go out and spend money and buy arts, art supplies. So if you don't have a large piece of paper, the large sort of stuff, you can work on a smaller one for our school-based competition because it's just not going to be practical. But I do want everyone to come up with an artwork. So we'll explain that um, soon. Um, and you'll see the slides. I don't think I'll add to the video. I might, um, but we'll see how it goes. And then um, next, next term if we're back next term at the start of next term we better be back next term or this is going to go forever so uh, what we'll do is we'll actually make sure that there's um the people that have shown that they've got a bit of skill there work on it um they're recreating their artwork to submit but we'll wait and see our reflection please fill it in Okay, I left our code work right to the end of this video. Our code word is fox. Today's code word, fox. Send through the fox. Okay, guys, submit your work, hand in. Um, hope that all makes sense, and I will speak to you soon.